Hi, my name is Dr. Neil Sungvi. I am the Director of Electrophysiology for Flagler Health Plus. I've helped uh, develop and direct the Rhythm Management Center here at Flagler Health Plus as we try to treat rhythm diseases, including atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation is the most common heart rhythm problem in the world. By our best estimates, approximately 5 million plus Americans suffer from this disease. It is growing at an exponential rate. It has two major problems associated with it. It is a creator of strokes. It's the number one cause of strokes in patients over the age of 65 due to clots. And it is also a very symptomatic disease where patients will have a variety of symptoms, including shortness of breath, a fluttering sensation in their chest, lightheadedness, uh, profound fatigue, as well as a sense of feeling unwell in general. The incidence of this disease, as I mentioned, is simply increasing. And it's increasing because, one, fortunately, we're living longer. But it's also increasing because our population is suffering from more heart disease, more high blood pressure, more obesity, more sleep apnea than we ever have in the past. And as a result, members of our population are going to continue to suffer from this particular problem. The challenge is, is that there's a group of people who just can't tolerate the medicines. And they can't tolerate them because they're susceptible to bleeding. They may have GI ulcers that tend to bleed. They may have something in the colon that tends to bleed. They may be at a risk for frequent falls where we're worried that a catastrophic fall may result in a hemorrhage in their brain or somewhere else. Or they may have had a prior history of having a brain or cerebral hemorrhage where the risk of having a recurrence is so high that putting them on a blood thinner would be too risky. So what do we do for those patients? Those patients have a high risk of stroke but they have a high risk of bleeding and we need to mitigate. And so some time ago, a device was uh, developed called the Watchman device. And the theory behind it is one of plugging a common place where clots form. That clot, 90% of the time, forms in a pouch called the left atrial appendage. It's a pouch that sits in the left upper chamber of the heart. And so when a patient's in fibrillation, the heart, rather than squeezing nice and steady, is quivering. And when it's quivering, blood's not moving. When blood doesn't move, it clots. And so it's these clots that break off and cause strokes to happen, and the blood thinners try to prevent the clotting. But if you can't be on a blood thinner, what do you do? Many patients will ask me, well, what about an aspirin? Why can't I just take an aspirin? The problem is aspirin, unfortunately, has been shown to be ineffective in preventing these clots from happening. And perhaps it's because of the fact that aspirin is considered a platelet inhibitor, which is a substance that does help with certain form of clotting, but the majority of this clotting is from something called a thrombin or thrombus. And so thrombin inhibitors are what Eliquis and those types of medicines are. And so they are much more effective in preventing these clots that happen from atrial fibrillation. So as I mentioned, there's a device called a Watchman device. So many years ago, we recognized that about 90% of these clots, when they form, they form in this pouch. So for years, surgeons have been cutting off this pouch whenever they're doing open heart surgery for certain valvular diseases and so forth. And we have found that those patients where the pouch was cut off, they had a much lower risk of stroke if they happened to have atrial fibrillation versus those patients who still had their pouch. And that's what clued us in that this pouch is a big uh, participant in the clotting uh, cascade as it pertains to uh, AFib. So this little guy right here, the Watchman device was created. And what is it? It's a small metal scaffold that collapses. So it's really small, goes through a small tube, gets inserted into the heart through a minimally invasive approach through the veins of the legs, gets placed into this pouch, and pops open and plugs the pouch off. And by placing this device, we're able to seal off that pouch. And if we're able to successfully seal off the pouch, we have found that the risk of stroke or the consequences of being on a blood thinner, which is bleeding, are reduced. And patients are able to reduce their risks without having to be on a long-term blood thinner. So it's meant for patients who can't be on long-term blood thinners. If you're an older patient who has high blood pressure and diabetes, uh, may have had a stroke in the past, God forbid, well, you're at a very elevated risk and you need something to 
bring that risk down. And if it's a blood thinner, if you can take the blood thinner, that's what would be our first choice. And if you're unable to take the blood thinner because of some reason or another, then this Watchman becomes a viable option.